Hi, I'm Evan Clemens. I'm a transplant pharmacist at the University of Washington Medical Center, and I'm here to present Transplant Medications, a class for you to become familiar with the medications you'll take after organ transplant. This video is for future heart, liver, kidney, or lung transplant patients at the University of Washington Medical Center. This is part two of a three-part series on transplant medications. If you've not already watched part one, which explained general medication information, please go back and watch that video first. In this video, we'll discuss the different types of medication in detail and explain why we prescribe these to our transplant patients. We want you to learn this information because medications after transplant are very important. After viewing this recording, please also watch part three, where we'll talk about insurance coverage for these medications. The first medication to talk about is tacrolimus. This is one of the most important medications after transplant, and it's very good at preventing rejection. You'll take it twice a day, 12 hours apart. Your dose will change often and depend on the level of the medication in the body. We will check the level of tacrolimus with scheduled blood tests. If the level of medication in your body is too high, you are at higher risk of having side effects. On the other hand, if the level is too low, you are at higher risk of having rejection. This is why we check the medication level every time you come back for follow-up. Tacrolimus also has interactions with other medications as well. Also, some fruits such as grapefruit, pomelo, pomegranate, and starfruit interact with tacrolimus. It will be important for you to read ingredient labels to make sure your food items don't contain these specific fruits. We also ask that you stop taking any over-the-counter pain medicine other than acetaminophen, also known as Tylenol, as these medications can increase your risk of kidney damage when combined with your tacrolimus. Some side effects you may feel are headache and shakiness or tremor. The tremors are common, but usually get better or go away over time. If either of these side effects are too bothersome, please let us know and we will work with you to help reduce them. Some of the other common side effects that you may not feel include high blood pressure, high blood sugar, or high cholesterol. We will monitor for these effects long-term and treat them if they come up. The second immunosuppressant is mycophenolate. You'll take mycophenolate twice a day, just like tacrolimus. We will monitor for any signs or symptoms of side effects with mycophenolate. Some of the common side effects are nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea. Mycophenolate can also decrease some of your blood counts, specifically your white blood cells. If you're having significant side effects, we may lower your dose of mycophenolate. Also, if you have the potential of becoming pregnant, know that mycophenolate can cause serious birth defects and miscarriages, so it's important to avoid pregnancy while on this medication. The last immunosuppressant is prednisone, which is a third medication used to prevent rejection. Prednisone is a steroid. All patients will receive some steroids in the operating room at the time of transplant. Many patients will also be on prednisone when they leave the hospital, and some will continue prednisone lifelong. Steroids have a lot of side effects. Many of the side effects are worse at high doses and better at lower doses. Prednisone can make it hard to sleep, so try to take it earlier in the day. Some patients notice a change in their mood when on higher doses in the hospital. This will get better as doses decrease. It can also upset your stomach and cause heartburn. Take your prednisone with food to help prevent this. Prednisone may also increase your blood pressure and blood sugar. If you're on medications to lower your blood sugar, you may need higher doses after transplant. Long-term prednisone may also cause a weakening of the bones. Talk to your doctor if you have any questions or concerns about these side effects. Let's talk about what happens if you forget to take the immunosuppressant medications. If you forget a dose, even just one dose, your immune system will start to wake up. That's why it's so important to take these medications every day to prevent rejection. If you do miss a dose, it's not possible to fix it by taking a double dose. In fact, that can be counterproductive as you may experience more side effects. The best thing to do in the scenario where you've missed a dose is to call the doctor or transplant nurse for further advice.
it is important to understand that all immunosuppressant medications increase your risk for infection. That's because these medicines make your immune system weaker. That is how they work. The result is you will have a greater risk of common things. Things like the cold, flu, or bacterial infections. We may also see infections that only happen in people with compromised immune systems. Those are called opportunistic infections. Another thing we worry about in people with a compromised immune system is an increased risk of cancer. Some cancers are preventable. For example, you can reduce your risk of lung cancer by not smoking. And to prevent skin cancer, you can use sunblock or wear protective clothing to help reduce your skin cancer risk. So the second category of medications that we'll talk about today are anti-infection drugs. These help prevent infection. You are at the highest risk for infections right after the transplant because while in the hospital, you'll get extra strong medications to lower your immune system. Thus, you will need extra protection to prevent certain infections early after transplant. The first category of anti-infection medications we'll talk about is antifungal medications. Oral thrush is a common type of yeast infection in the mouth that can happen after transplant. You will take one of these three medications depending on the type of organ transplant you receive. Most patients will need to take antifungal medication for two to six months, but it may be longer depending on your specific risks. The next category of anti-infection medication is antibiotics. Antibiotics are mainly used to prevent a specific type of pneumonia or lung infection called PJP pneumonia, which is more common in transplant patients. It can also prevent urinary tract infections, which can happen after a kidney transplant. The main antibiotic that we use in almost all transplant recipients is sulfamethoxazole trimethoprim also known as Bactrim. This is a sulfa type drug, which some people may be allergic to. If you've been told that you have a sulfa allergy, make sure to discuss that with your transplant team as soon as possible. How long you take this medication will depend on the type of transplant you receive. Both Bactrim and its alternative Dapsone can make your skin sensitive to the sun, so it's important to wear sunscreen whenever you're outside. The last category of anti-infection medications are the antiviral medications. These medications prevent a virus that's already in your body from flaring up. The type of antiviral medication you receive will depend on your personal virus history and the type of transplant you received. Many patients will take an antiviral for three to six months, but some may take it longer. The remaining items we commonly prescribe to transplant patients are various medications to help support your overall recovery. That can include dietary supplements, such as calcium and vitamin D to protect your bones, a multivitamin for nutritional support and wound healing, and a magnesium supplement if your magnesium levels are low. Azure-reducing medicines are also commonly prescribed after transplant. These protect your stomach and prevent ulcers, which may be caused by prednisone. Most people will take these for several months after the surgery, and sometimes longer than that. No matter what type of organ you receive, your heart is another very important organ we need to keep healthy. Baby aspirin is often prescribed for overall heart health and can help prevent blood clots. Though not everyone needs this medication after transplant, your surgeon will help determine if this medicine is right for you. Statin medications help lower cholesterol and can also prevent heart attacks and strokes that are common after transplant. Let's also talk about blood pressure. Many patients may also be taking blood pressure or other heart medications before their transplant. If so, some of these may continue after the transplant, but the doses may need to be adjusted depending on your treatment plan. Controlling blood pressure 
both before and after transplant, is still important for your overall health. In fact, some of the medications we use after transplant may also increase blood pressure, so you may need more medication to help with this after transplant, or you might develop high blood pressure when it was previously normal. Finally, high blood sugar is also common after transplant as a side effect of some of the medications we use. Some patients may even develop new diabetes after the transplant and may need medications, even including insulin, to help manage this. Let us know if you have any questions or concerns about controlling your blood pressure or blood sugar. The better controlled these diseases are going into the surgery, the more successful you'll be at continuing that good control afterwards. This is the end of part two of the three-part education series we have recorded for you. Now please take some time to think about this information and move on to part three. In part three, we will discuss the costs and insurance coverage of your transplant medications. Thanks for your attention today, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.